Welcome back. When it comes to our finances, it seems we have never felt worse. Here's a look by the numbers. The latest MNP Consumer Debt Index fell to an all-time low as 22% of Canadians surveyed said their debt situation is much worse. That's up 2% from last quarter. 28% of us say our debt situation is worse than it was five years ago. And almost half say they regret the amount of debt they've taken on. A full 63% say they're worried about their ability to repay their debt. And of concern is that more Canadians, or almost one in five at 18%, took money out of savings, home equity, or some other source to pay debt or meet expenses in this past year. Just over a quarter, or 26%, say they have made only minimum payments on their credit card. 19% are only paying the minimum on lines of credit. All of this adds up to a lot of stress. 60% of Canadians report stress and anxiety around their finances. And almost a third, or 35%, admit to hiding how much debt they have from family and friends, leading to a feeling of isolation. Grant Bazian is president of MNP, the insolvency advisory firm, which conducts this survey. Grant, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. I wanted to start with that last data point because that sense of isolation and stress, uh, of course, is a terrible combination. It means people who need help are actually less likely to ask for it. And I know you see that a lot. By the time we come to you, it's often later than it could have been. Yes, yeah, so we encourage people to come as soon as they're realizing they might have some sort of financial situation. Uh, so they can control their situation as best as possible. But you're right, when they tend to uh, bury their head in the sand, uh, they're embarrassed uh, as a result, uh, they don't reach out. And that's what our sentiment survey is indicating, that people are isolated. And it's not just because they may be embarrassed about their debt situation. I think they're realizing that they probably shouldn't be spending as much money as they have been in the past. They can't afford the trips and the outings. And so they're not spending as much time with family and friends. And they're getting that social isolation as well. So, and that led to another question. Uh, you've been doing this a long time. Uh, we've seen this data, of course, getting worse. I mean, we survey after survey, it's been a deterioration story, Grant, for a long time now, a couple of years. Uh, are you starting, do you think, to see a shift in spending patterns? In other words, we're realizing we can't afford to take the trip to buy the consumer goods, uh, or are we still indebting ourselves in order to keep our lifestyles the same? I think it's a bit of a combination of both. I don't know if there's a pattern exactly one way or another. I think by virtue of people dipping into their savings, you mentioned uh, some of the statistics earlier on where people are, uh, more people are spending uh, you know, less on paying down their credit cards and they're dipping into their savings. So if they're dipping into their savings, that may be as a result they can't live, you know, they can't maintain their normal necessities, the payments for the necessities, or they may they may want to maintain their lifestyle. It's hard to say. Uh, maybe a combination of the both. But when I think the isolation piece is definitely people spending less time with others and they're feeling isolated because they realize they can't spend. So I think it's a combination of the both. Some people are realizing they can't spend, and others may be not changing their habits and digging into their savings to maintain their lifestyle. When you look at this data, uh, as we say, it's you know the, the second lowest it's been. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a very bad place. It's, you would expect the economy to be in crisis. Are you surprised when you then look at the economy? And actually, it's not great, but it's not terrible. We're not in a deep recession. People aren't seeing mass layoffs. Does that surprise you? In other words, there's a kind of a, a disconnect between this data and the broader economy. Uh, not entirely. I think, uh, you know, there's always a lag when interest rates are increased. It's not an immediate effect. So I think a lot of people are still, you know, are feeling the, the, the interest rate increases just now from what happened maybe a few quarters ago. It's not instantaneous. And likewise, if the Bank of Canada were to reduce interest rates, I think you'll see a lag when people start feeling better about their finances and spending more. So I think it's just a, a bit of a lag in, in the phasing of the situation. So I guess one thing that we would try to read the tea leaves on this is whether things are improving or not. Obviously, sentiment is not, but because there's that lag, to your point, and we may be at a pivot moment for where borrowing costs are going. They might be getting better. We think they will this year at some point. Uh, would you expect to see this, this data get better in 2024? I think if uh, it may be a, a start of a plateau, and I think if interest rates go down and, and inflation goes down and you know food prices go down, I think the sentiment survey will definitely you know increase and and people will feel better about themselves and the index will increase. Uh, that's sort of common sense would dictate that. So good to have you, Grant. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Amanda. Grant Bazian is president of MNP.
as Grant mentioned, overall inflation may be cooling, but prices for groceries do remain elevated. So one of the big affordability issues facing Canadians is hanging on. What are the chances of relief in the year ahead? Gary Sands is Senior VP of the Canadian Federation of Independent Grocers. Gary, thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. So big picture, uh, what are your members seeing? Are we starting to see at the, at the kind of middle level, the producer level, price declines that we might start to see in the grocery store? No, we're not seeing declines. I wish I could be the bearer of, of good and happy tidings, but um, what we're seeing right now on the ground, um, we're, our members are reporting we're about 60% of the volume of price increases uh, as opposed to this time last year. So we're getting, we're, we're, we're down uh, about 40% in terms of the volume of requests, but we're still getting a lot of requests okay. for cost increases that look to be coming into play probably in February, March, April is when you're going to start to see those start to materialize. And our members are reporting everything on average. It's an overall average of uh, three to 12% wow. increases in the products that they're getting. And they're, in addition to that, there's some notable exceptions. Uh, for example, vegetable oils are up by 40%. That's four zero percent. So I, as I said, I wish I could say um, and chime in with other economists saying, mm -hmm. you know, things are looking good, but I can only report to you what our members are receiving in terms of cost requests from suppliers. So that will be obviously bad news for a lot of households, for every household <laughs> that is buying groceries, Gary. Um, when you think of the factors that are at play here, one thing we've talked about before is this uh, so-called grocery code of conduct that uh, I think the intention is to, uh, with the producers, try to streamline things, make pricing better. Do we have the hope of seeing that? and will it make any difference? I firmly believe it will make a difference. If if uh, I didn't believe that, I can tell you on behalf of our association, we wouldn't have been at the table for almost three years now uh, coming to an agreement on this code. I believe that will make a, a, a huge difference for the industry. It won't level the playing field, Amanda. The, the playing field in Canada is never going to be level mm -hmm. in, in Canada, the retail grocery industry anymore, but it will help. Uh, people who are competing on the playing field compete in a fair and more transparent way. I think it will reduce costs. Uh, I, I'm absolutely convinced of that. And I think when you reduce costs uh, and provide more opportunities for competitors, I, I think that translates into lower prices for consumers. Can you say, Gary, what are the forces that are sending prices higher when you say there is this volume of price requests coming through the system? Are those domestically uh, generated or are they still international issues as we've seen over the past couple of years? It, 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 we're being told by the suppliers it's a combination of both. Um, there are a number of external factors that uh, outside of Canada that are still at play. The Ukraine, um, uh, the war in Ukraine still has an impact. I mean, yep. Ukraine gave us 70% of their sunflower oil and that that's, that's had a direct impact on that lack of supply. We had, uh, I think it was called Black Pod outbreak in in, uh, in Ghana and the Ivory Coast that impacted chocolate prices uh, or cocoa, you know, chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of factors, but domestically, we know that the wildfires in in, in Western Canada uh, are going to have an impact on on grain prices, and right. that that will translate into higher beef prices. So, it's it's both Amanda that our suppliers are telling. Um, the retailer. So again, I, I, I'm always careful not to point fingers at anyone. I don't think that's helpful. It's just to tell you honestly, this is what we're seeing. Gary, it's good to have that view. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Gary Sands is Senior VP of the Canadian Federation of Independent Grocers. Coming up, what older Canadians need to know about younger ones, especially at work. That's still ahead. But first, a high-profile celebrity breakup caught our eye this week. Tiger Woods will no longer be the face of Nike Golf, ending a 27-year partnership that weathered more than a few ups and downs. But Nike got out of golf equipment a few years back and more recently promised major cost cuts at the company. So maybe it's obvious Woods wouldn't make the cut. No doubt a difficult decision, but in the end, Nike decided to just do it. Back after this.